Hello and welcome to BIM 360 Basics. We're nearing the end of our collaboration for Civil 3D video series and let's review what we've done so far. We've talked about what collaboration for Civil 3D is and we've talked about whether or not you want to consider using it in your company. Next we talked about our fictitious project team that we've set up with six different members and I went in and created a project in BIM 360, invited those members to it and made sure they had permissions to the project folder. Then our first team member, Tom Anderson, the surveyor, went in and created the survey file for the project. Not only did he create the drawing file for everyone to XREF, but he also created a data shortcut of the surface to reference that data as well. Next, our designer Paula went in and XREFed Tom's file into her new file, drew an alignment, and then saved that file for the rest of the team to use. Then our road designer jumped in and he referenced in Paula's drawing as well as Tom's drawing in addition to the alignment and surface that each one of them provided. From that, Greg was able to create an existing ground profile for the road and then design a new profile and he saved that drawing up for the team to look at. Then our project manager Mindy got in and saw that there was a road design drawing and she wanted to see how things were going. She opened it up and right away saw a few things that she wanted to change. So she used the issues functionality to notify each person of the change that needed to be made and also used the markup functionality to make it even more clear by adding some graphics. And one of the issues that she submitted was to have me add another person to the project, Hans Close, who is going to be the drainage engineer. So that's where we are right now. And in front of you, you can see the email that I received from BIM360 letting me know that Mindy assigned an issue to me. It's issue number three. Please add Hans Close to the project. So I'm going to click on the link so I can view some more details about the issue. And we'll jump right in and see what's going on. So by clicking the link, it takes me straight to the issues tab and it opens the issue for me. Now, if this had been associated with one of the drawings in the project, there'd be a link right here under linked document. And I could click on that. It would teleport me right to that document and zoom in right where the push pin is to call my attention exactly to the spot where it needed to be. Now, this is a different kind of an issue. This is something more project management related. So I can just read the details and see that I need to add Hans Close. In the description, I would probably see Hans's contact information, his email address, and things like that. So let's go take care of that. I'll go into Project Admin, click on Members, and then I'll click Add. Start typing in Hans's name, and since I've added him before, he's going to pop right up. I'll click Select. His company happens to be Madrigal Engineers, who specializes in drainage design, and he is also a civil engineer. Now, what's interesting about that is, if you remember, Greg Rodriguez is also a civil engineer. So by giving Hans this role, he'll automatically be added to the project as far as permissions are concerned. And we'll check that out to verify in just a second. But way back in the video where I talked about adding people to folders and leveraging roles to make permissions go more quickly, uh, we'll get to see that come into play right now. Now, I don't want Hans to be a project admin, but I do need to make sure he has access to docs over here on the right. So let's switch back to document management. And I just want to make sure that Hans actually did get permission to the project folder. So I'll go over here to project files, click the ellipsis and then permissions. And if I expand out civil engineer, I should see two names listed here. Hans was added automatically because I assigned him the role of civil engineer. That's why roles are powerful. I didn't have to come back here and add Hans as an individual to this folder or any other folders where he may have needed specific privileges. So I've added him to the project. I'm now ready to go back to the issues tab and let Mindy know that I've completed the task she asked me to do. So I'll simply change the status from open to answered, provide a comment and say, you know, I've added Hans, and click done. Mindy's gonna receive an email letting her know that the status has changed on this issue and she's going to be able to click a link in that email and come right to this location. Once she sees that Hans has been added, 
Maybe she'll contact Hans and make sure that he's able to get into everything that he needs to get into. Once she's verified that I've actually done what she asked successfully, she can go in and then close down this issue. And it won't go away, it won't delete it. That issue will always stay in the project, but it will take on a status of closed. And that's important because everything you do in BIM 360 Docs is recorded and stored. So six months or a year or two years from now, if some sort of issue arises and somebody wants to go back and review what happened with that issue, who created it, how was it addressed, how did all the activity play out until it was actually uh, completed, that's all recorded and that can all be reviewed at any time. All right, so that's how the interaction can happen between a project manager and the other team members using the issues functionality, or as we saw in the last video, the markup functionality as well. We have one more video in the series, it's coming up, and it's just going to summarize what we talked about and what we learned. So please check that out and we'll wrap things up there. Thanks for visiting BIM 360 Basics. Please keep checking back for more tips, tricks, and tutorials, all having to do with BIM 360.